Hey, you guys remember this? Winamp. Winamp. It really whips the llama's ass. This was the go-to program of my generation in the early 2000s to play any sort of music on our computers, generally MP3 files. Anyways, Winamp used to come with this beautiful set of visualizations accompanying it. And uh, frankly, you know, some of them were truly mesmerizing. And very recently, I realized that we could do this in JavaScript. So let's do that today. So the intent I had was that we'll do some sort of music visualization that looks like this or this. So let's get on with it. Whenever we think of music, we typically think of it in the form of a waveform. This is what we think music or sound should look like. Now JavaScript has some inbuilt classes that are very nifty in retrieving these specific set of frequencies in a given slice of time. So let's say there is a music, you know, a music can be X amount of length and you want to analyze a specific interval of it. JavaScript has the ability to sort of retrieve that. And the way to do that is through a, a, a set of classes called audio context. Through the audio context, you can retrieve something called as an analyzer node. And uh, the analyzer node is itself a class which has a very good function or a very nice function called the get byte time domain data. Now this will return an array of uint8 array. Now think of this as an integer array. And this is what that integer array can look like depending on what that music frequency is or, 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 or what it has picked up in that specific frequency. This is what it will look like. Now can you look at these set of numbers and tell me that you can't create a graph out of this? This is exactly what, this is the visualization that I was talking about. This is exactly what we will do, it, do with it. Now let's look at some little bit of code, um, you know, sort of like a pseudo code and show you what the code will look like. In your HTML, you will of course create the audio tag like this, you know, which will basically point to your MP3 file or a WAV file. And you will def also define the audio type like this. In your JavaScript file, you will retrieve that audio source, you know, whatever you have declared in HTML by using the get element by ID, you'll use the audio element. Then you'll create the audio context. From the context, you will create something called as the source. You will uh, create the source using the create media element source function. And you'll pass in the audio element that you've retrieved. From the audio context, you can also create something called as the analyzer. All right. So the analyzer is the one that is actually going to be retrieving you those specific waveform frequencies or the frequencies as represented by numbers. What we do with it is entirely up to us. Once we do that, for the analyzer, you can set something called as the FFT size. This is the fast Fourier transform size. Basically, this, this is the count of the number of frequencies that we can retrieve from that slice of analyzed time that we have, right? So this number can be anything. I think the maximum that we can give is about 2048, um, but, then the, uh, but then your FFT size would be too dense and it might not look so visually appealing. But when, if you are implementing it, you can implement it in any way you want. Anyways, that being said, uh, once you have set the FFT size, you can then use the frequency bin count to get the buffer length and uh, declare a U and array of that. After that, you will have to basically connect your source to the analyzer. Basically, this is, remember the source that you're talking about is the audio element, right? So you're connecting the source to both your analyzer and as well as the audio context or destination. This is actually your browser. So what you're doing is you're saying, okay, whenever you play an audio on the HTML, this, it is directly only connected to your browser. But here you're saying, I wanted to connect to both my browser as well as my analyzer. The analyzer is the one that will constantly retrieve the data array. All right. So this get time domain data, this, this bet, byte time domain data, it will constantly get and it will refresh it. Typically what is happening is, um, uh, you know, on your browser, when you have this audio element playing, it is connected to your browser. So it plays on your browser as well as your analyzer, which is constantly retrieving this frequency data for that particular slice of time. All right. With this in mind, let's get coding only the part that will retrieve this and see what it does. All right, let's begin. This is what our HTML file looks like. This is as per usual. But the most important parts of the HTML file are this audio tag, which, uh, you know, on which I have an MP3 file playing 
and a canvas on which I will be performing the visualization. I also have a button included on this HTML file. You know, I call it start visualization and I have the requisite styles and all included for it. Also important is the audio. Uh, there is a file, uh, there is a JavaScript file called audiovis.js that I have included. And this will work as the main source file for our JavaScript. All right. This is my JavaScript file in which I have declared a bunch of uh, variables that I will be using throughout the program. The most important part over here is the window.add event listener, which uh, has the load function. Now the load function typically loads the canvas, loads the context and everything. And very importantly, it also gets the button that we have declared on the HTML page and adds an event over here and calls a function called start visualization. Now this, it is very important to actually have some action performed on the browser when you, uh, when you uh, typically when you want to play a sound or else, uh, you know, on startup, a lot of modern browsers do not allow you to uh, sort of start playing a sound uh, automatically. So you need to have some action happening on the screen so that you can access it through JavaScript. That's the reason why we have to do it uh, through this method. Now let's look at what the result looks like. We have not tied in anything. So this is what it looks like. So I can actually start playing the music and uh, it will actually start to play, you know, like this. All right. So anyways, let's get to coding the very first start visualization function and see how it goes. When we start visualization, let's erase all the contents of the canvas. So we start with a blank slate. Next, we'll get the audio element by using the document.getElementById function. The context is constructed and we create the source and the analyzer from it. We'll set the FFT size to 256 and create an unsigned integer array whose size will be half of the FFT size. Next, we'll connect the source to the analyzer and to the browser. And finally, once everything is initialized, we'll disable the button on the screen and we'll call a function called audio visualize that will do our visualization. Let's see what that did. I'll click on the start visualization button. Nothing happens, of course, because we have not defined the audio visualize function. Now we want to sort of start with a visualization, but what sort of visualization? Let's look at some explanation and then we'll code it up. So we already know that the analyzer will return an unsigned integer array that will look like this one, right? So what if I was to just simply plot all of this into a graph? So 118, for example, let's say I have a canvas and the canvas, I treat this as my baseline. Now from the baseline, if I was to draw a line of 118 in size, this, will, this is probably what it will look like. 119 will look like this, 116 will look like this and so on and so forth, right? So I will have like a line graph that will be ever changing as the music changes. As the music keeps on changing, the graph will also change, giving us the visualization that we desire. So let's code this up and see how it goes. We'll start by calling the get byte time domain data to get the frequency data. Remember that the data array now contains our frequency data as numbers. Remember that baseline frequency value in the data array is 128. We'll clear the previous shape first. We'll calculate something called as a slice width. This is supposed to be our increment on the X axis. We'll also initialize X to zero and Y to a baseline of 200 pixels from the bottom of the canvas. Now we'll draw a line from our baseline to the value in the data array. Now we'll do this for every element in the data array. X is incremented by slice width and then we call the request animation frame and this will serve as our loop for the audio visualization. All right, let's see what that did. So I'm going to refresh the screen. I'll click on the start visualization and you can see the line that is being already formed. All right, let me play the music and you see the graph that is beautifully displayed, right? It's exactly, it's exactly how you would expect the waveform or the frequency uh, represented in a waveform. Uh, we can make one more little modification over here. Uh, remember we set the FFT size to 256. I can set this to 2048. So more data is collected per slice of time when the music is playing or when it is being analyzed. Go back, refresh the screen. 
start visualization and play the music the graph looks entirely different this time right all right so i'm going to make one more modification to this in which the graph is displayed as a circle or the bars of a line chart are essentially transposed onto a circle it's easier said than done so let's do that and i'll show you how that goes all right as is customary we'll get the data array from the analyzer we'll clear the rectangle but notice that i'm using rgba here and setting the alpha to 0.1 this means that the canvas will be cleared very slowly we are going to be drawing our circle in the center of the screen that is what the cx and cy variables are we will require a radian and an increment to that radian the increment of this radian will be a ratio of pi over the data array's length now for every point in the data array we'll simply calculate the x and y positions using the data array point as the radius and radian as the angle we'll draw a small circle at that point and we'll increment the radian angle and we'll call the request animation frame and that's it let's see what that did all right so the one thing that i forgot to explain was the increment uh, to the hue all right so for the fill style we are using hue and i add the hue also but let's see what that did we'll refresh the screen i'll start the visualization and you can see that the hue basically cycles from its value from 0 to 360 which is i think from red all the way to blue cycling through all the colors in between the magic happens when i play the screen or when i play the music beautiful right you know i could be wrong but i do remember seeing something like this in winamp and you can see how simple it was to generate right so the one thing that we could be doing over here is uh, going back to our fill style and changing the hue to 75% so that it's a little bit brighter you know i thought that some of the blue hues were not so bright at all uh, on the screen and let's also increase the fft size uh, to let's say 1024 and see what that did going back refresh start visualization and play You can see a lot more patterns emerge this time. And the hue is actually doing its part and so is the uh, erasing of the canvas. You know, we we put a delay over there in the RGBA and that seems to have created the desired effect that we required. All right, I'm going to stop here. So that was it for this week, right? Uh, so I'll add a couple of more visualizations to this, and all of this would, of course, be available on GitHub for you to consume uh, and to modify and to add perhaps more visualizations to this. All right. So that is all for this week. Thank you so much for joining. See you again next week.